Well, hello, you wonderful humans, and welcome back to Elden Ring. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get the best sword in the game without even having to fight a single soul. Now, if you were disappointed that there was no easy mode option for Elden Ring, well, this is, in fact, your easy mode option. If you go to this location and get this weapon, you are going to be astounded at how good it is. It's called the Sword of Night and Flame. It's a straight sword with standard and pierce, but its attribute scaling is actually off of intelligence and faith. So you do need Intelligence of 24 and Faith of 24 to be able to equip it, and if you've been watching my previous videos, you know how to level up fast so you can scale your attributes in this way to be able to equip this weapon. Now this is considered one of the legendary armaments in the game, and it comes with a unique skill called Night and Flame Stance. This allows you to hold the sword level and prepare to cast a sorcery. So you use your skill button, which is L2, and then you can follow up with a normal attack, also known as R1, to cast the Night Comet Sorcery. Or you can follow up with a strong attack to sweep forward with a burst of flames. Now I'm going to show you how to access this weapon very early in the game, and you don't even need to have defeated Margit to be able to do it, because there's actually a way you can sneak around the entire castle to get to the second area. Now for this, you're definitely going to want to have unlocked your mount already. But once you get to the Storm Hill Shack here, we're going to run straight up this road and under this bridge. When you get to the top of this where it turns left, just go straight through the woods here. And you'll be able to go through the woods and then you'll see a bridge on the other side. Once you get to the end of this bridge, we're just going to hop our way down. And then we're going to head around and to the left. And this is going to take you down this little canyon that goes around the entire castle. Just run all the way through here, avoiding all of the wolves and everything that might be in here until you get to the other side. As you emerge from this path, you can just keep going down this little road. And you're going to see a sight of grace on the other side. You're going to want to light this sight of grace. So that way, if anything bad happens, you won't have to do that whole run again. Now from here, we need to get to kind of the other side of this area. And I'm not going to show you the full run because it's pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to follow the road and you're going to get all of these Sight of Graces along the way just in case. I wouldn't fight anything here because a lot of the stuff is strong or annoying. Unless you're farther in the game, obviously, but it's just kind of a waste of time to fight it if you don't need to. Eventually, you're going to make your way up into here. You can go up here, or you can go up, I believe, right over here. So you can go all the way through all this water area. There's a couple different ways to kind of get back up onto this road. But you're going to run up through here until you get to the northern Lake Shore, something like that. The quickest way to get to the spot is definitely by just running along that big castle here and just avoiding everything along the way until you can get up through here. Now, once you light this Sight of Grace, we're going to continue heading northeast up the map. We're going to follow this road into these ruins here. Now, this is where things can, if you're coming here for the first time, seem a little confusing because you're running through here and you're like, well, I got to get to the other side, but I don't know how. And you're going to see something different on my particular game right now. But there will be a wall here. To get rid of this wall, all you need to do is just smack it. And the wall will disappear, allowing you to actually continue running through. There'll be a Sight of Grace on the other side. And then we need to run up to that keep all the way up at the end of this road. Now there's going to be terrifying things falling from the sky as you run up through here. So just avoid those. It seems like if you kind of just run in different directions, they'll kind of stay mostly on the road and just try not to get hit by them. I, I find that if you run along this side, you're relatively okay. The sketchy part is actually going to be once you try and get the Sight of Grace at the end of this particular road, because they're going to be falling while you try and light the Sight of Grace and rest at it. So uh, just uh, don't die and grab that Sight of Grace. Now, once you arrive at the entrance, this is where things are going to get spicy. We're going to run in through the entrance here, and we're going to hug the left-hand side of this path. And we're going to try and avoid all of the little hands that are in the ground. These things will very well one-shot you, so just try and avoid them as much as possible. 
And we're going to go up around the left here. There's another set of hands right there. Uh, this is where I died because I realized I wasn't recording when I ran through the first time. <laughs> um, but we're going to go keep going to the left. Now there's going to be another hand right there and then also one that's already out of the ground. So I recommend running past this as quick as possible because if it hits you, you're going to die. All right, now we're inside of this building. We need to head up to the top. Or there's going to be a site of grace for us to be able to rest at. Okay, so we're just going to continue along this path right here. And we're going to avoid every single thing that spawns. These little guards here. You can roll past them. Just avoid them. There we go. And we're going to keep running through this way. And when we get to this bridge right here, we're actually going to need to jump down... To this keep below and we can do that right about here and once we're here we're gonna jump down one more level and then we're gonna head down this ladder once in this building we're there baby all you have to do is loot this wonderful chest and you're gonna be able to acquire the sword of knights in flame now to upgrade this weapon, you're going to need something called Somber Smithing Shards. And we can get those almost in the same area. If we go from up here back down into the Lakeshore Grace Point, you can run along the water here. And then you're going to be able to find this mining cave right here. You can go in here and take the shaft down by walking on the little button. And there should be a Lost Grace to synchronize with down here as well. And you'll be able to get your first Somber Smithing Stone in this chest that's just past the Site of Grace. There's going to be two little guards walking around. You can sneak up on them and backstab them to death. Now if you hardcore parkour along this pillar and up these ledges, you'll find another Smithing Stone over there. And another uh, Somber Smithing Stone level 3 over on that little dead dude. Now, so far, we've only gotten these somber level 3 ones. We actually need somber level 1 to be able to upgrade the sword. So just keep that in mind while we're farming all this stuff up. Now, the somber level 1s are going to possibly come from these, like, silver glowing ones. And one of the easiest ways to kind of farm this area up is just to run all the way through down to where the boss battle is and just pick up all of the little smithing stone glowing, like, gold and silver ones along the way. Now, the one downside of this weapon is if you have a favorite Ash of War, you actually cannot equip any Ashes of War to this new weapon and I guess that's because it would be way too overpowered if you could but once you acquire some of these somber smithing stones that cave will be full of them you can just kind of fight and stab your way through it collect all of the smithing stones and somber smithing stones along the way and then you could head back to a blacksmith or anything to be able to strengthen your armament. Now, I do hope you all enjoyed the video let me know what you think of the sword of night and flame in the comments below and I'll see you all in the next one.